Welcome to the ChatGPT Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Each episode, we dive into the latest developments in the exciting field of artificial intelligence, exploring its applications and potential impacts on our daily lives. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. If you've been following the podcast for a while, you'll know that over the last six months, I've been working on a stealth AI startup. Of the hundreds of projects I've covered, this is the one that I believe has the greatest potential. So today I'm excited to announce AI Box. AI Box is a no-code AI app building platform paired with the App Store for AI that lets you monetize your AI tools. The platform lets you build apps by linking together AI models like ChatGPT, MidJourney, and Eleven Labs eventually will integrate with software like Gmail, Trello, and Salesforce, so you can use AI to automate every function in your organization. To get notified when we launch and be one of the first to build on the platform, you can join the waitlist at AIbox.ai. The link is in the show notes. We are currently raising a seed round of funding. If you're an investor that is focused on disruptive tech, I'd love to tell you more about the platform. You can reach out to me at jaden at AIbox.ai. I'll leave that email in the show notes. Today on the podcast, we're going to be jumping into some science mixed with AI, and we are talking about predicting the weather with AI. There's actually two groups of researchers that have recently come out with some very interesting research and some very interesting techniques. So today on the podcast, we're going to dive into what is going on in the world of weather prediction and AI. So the headline story here is, Essentially, that there's a team, um, a, a couple teams. So one of the teams was from Huawei Cloud, and essentially they developed a system dubbed the Pangu Weather, which essentially uses historical data um, of the weather to predict weather conditions a week in advance. And the system was trained using 39 years of weather data, uh, using current weather patterns to make predictions. Really interestingly, I think it performs its predictions a lot faster than existing systems, but it doesn't actually provide um, predictions about precipitation amount. So instead, it actually estimates temperature, wind speed, air pressure, and other weather-related data. Um, So that really leaves humans to estimate predictions based on the provided information. So simultaneously, a collective team from Tsinghua University, uh, which is essentially the China Meteorological uh, Meteorological Administration, and also um, one of their associates at the University of California, Berkeley, they designed what's called NowCastNet. So Unlike Pengu Weather, Nowcast Net focuses on predicting precipitation levels for the next six hours using both historical data and also physical rules, and it demonstrated accuracy compared to traditional systems and also delivered results more rapidly. So currently, the most accurate weather forecasting is done using numerical models, which apply mathematical and physical formulas to current weather data. And these systems, while generally reliable for major metropolitan areas, are CPU intensive and can take hours to generate results. So both the Pengu Weather and now CastNet um, systems both actually promise to significantly speed up this process. Eam Ebert, Uhoff, and Kyle Hilburn of the Cooperative Institute of Research in the Atmosphere at Colorado State University have recently kind of jumped into this whole conversation. Um, And they did this by actually publishing a weather predictive systems uh, report recently in which they called news and views article in nature Um, and so essentially they highlighted the challenges of building ai weather predictive systems and also the accomplishments of the team behind these two new platforms that have been developed so i think you know overall this is really impressive Um, while the accuracy of weather prediction is really crucial to a variety of sectors like if we're talking about agriculture disaster management um you know being able to accurately predict the weather is a really, really important for those sectors, particularly agriculture, predicting when rain or snow or frost might affect your crops um, with, you know, either kill them or help them. So this is really, really important. Um, billions of dollars trickles down below that, um, particularly through agriculture. And so this is something that people really want to get right. And so I think because of that, the potential of these AI-based weather predictions is really just the beginning 
um, we're really just beginning to kind of tap them. So I think though these systems are still in the kind of test of principle stage, the promising results point to the possibility of AI-based weather forecasting becoming essentially the standard approach in the not too distant future. And of course, you know, we haven't been doing this in the past. We haven't been doing a lot of this AI weather predictive systems. But um, now that we have this AI and we have these new AI power uh, capabilities that are super powerful, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of this in the future. Um, I think that these advancements mark a really significant step forward in the use of AI in meteorology, um, which in my opinion suggests a future where weather predictions are a lot faster, um, they're a lot less resource intensive, and maybe even more accurate, right? So I think it's interesting with, you know, both of these new models that have come out, they, you know, they both lacked something, but together they were able to predict the precipitation and the weather patterns based off of data and historical information um, and what we're seeing today. So I think that that's really impressive combining the two. They do get a really massive chunk of this prediction and they get it right to a high level. Um, and I think the results of these two kind of teams that are working on this are um, really impressive. They both published reports in the uh, journal Nature, um, so you can read more about them there. But Overall, I think this is going to have some massive implications for a lot of different industries, for weather, for news, for agriculture, a lot of different spaces. Of course, everyone wants to know what the weather's like, and if you could more accurately predict that, I think people would appreciate that. I have definitely have lived places before where um, weather predictions were never very accurate, and uh, some people just never checked what the weather was because uh, the accuracy was not super high. I think today, you know, by and large, we have fairly accurate weather prediction results in a majority of places, but being able to take this up to a higher level, um, and I think it's going to be really impressive, especially when we're looking at historical data, something I, I view as being uh, very impressive, very interesting is, you know, being able to look at uh, a further forecasted weather into the future. Now, I know that that is, that is sort of difficult um, due to a lot of different variables and a lot of the, you know, the weather predictions is essentially looking at historical data than looking at the data that we have today about, you know, how the weather and atmosphere and everything around us is going. So I understand there definitely are challenges there, but I think overall this is going to be a really interesting space to follow in the future. There definitely are some big implications into how this affects some, you know, multi-billion dollar industries. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify. The global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. We just launched our AI Creators Discord community. If you're looking for a really kind of hands-on and innovative place to talk to other people making amazing things in AI, you need to join this community. Obviously, it's a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can actually share prompts and software and tools that we're using to create really interesting use cases. We'd love to have you join and become part of the community. If you don't use Discord, there's also always the Facebook group. I'll link both of those down in the description. You've been listening to the ChatGPT podcast. Make sure to rate us wherever you listen to your podcasts and have a fantastic week.